Hi everyone, I am Shitaz Agarwal and I'm a fourth year grad student at West Virginia University and I'll be talking about the Petabyte project. Uh, here are the names of uh, all the Petabyte project team members. So let's begin. The goal of this project is to perform a uniform search for FRBs and pulsars in more than a petabyte of radio data, encompassing multiple observatories and observing parameters. Uh, we expect to search frequencies starting from 100 megahertz to as high as 32 gigahertz or even higher if we can get uh, that high frequency data. The data would be from various telescopes, uh, GBT, Arecibo, Parks, uh, and various others. So there are lots of motivations for a project like this. Uh, let me list a few of them. Uh, previously, many of the archival searches have not been done till a really high DM value. So they were searched till a DM of around 1,000 or 1,500, uh, which, uh, in which case, you might have, they might have missed some FRBs, which are high DM. While in the case of TPP, they're going to search till uniformly till a DM of around 10,000, thereby including all those high DM FRBs as well, which we might find. The completeness of the search pipelines haven't also been clearly understood in the past. So people already knew what stuff they are finding. So for example, single pulses or FRBs, but they didn't actually know what things they are missing. So typically the searches are done over different widths, DMs, and you don't know at which parameter values is your pipeline very less sensitive. While for, for, for the TPP team, we are part of this search analysis of uh, sensitivity analysis of search software effort, which was started by Liam Connor last year. And this is to characterize the completeness of different single pulse search pipelines. And we have developed tools, metrics, and visualizations to understand the completeness of our search pipelines. For example, in this case, the y-axis shows DM and pulse width, while the x-axis shows SNR. The color here represents the percentage of FRBs which were recovered. So this can give us an idea of the completeness of the pipeline with respect to different search parameters. Uh, also, previously, different data has been searched differently and with different sensitivities. This creates issues when you're trying to combine different, these different data sets to calculate or estimate a unified rate for all the FRBs. While in the case of TPB, we'll search everything with uh, uniform sensitivity and with the same pipeline and same configuration, and thus we'll be able to combine all these results to get a better rate estimator or rate estimate. A unified database of candidates would also be a gold mine for machine learning and non-machine learning development, algorithm development. And with TPP, we are going to make all these candidates, codes, and metadata publicly available so that it can be used for this algorithm development. So let's look at the pipeline. So starting from the data, uh, this data is then read into what we call a unified reader, which then passes the data to Heimdall, where it does its magic of Singapore searching and generates candidates for us. These candidates are then pre-processed and passed on to Fetch, which is a really powerful and accurate machine learning based classifier. Fetch then classifies all of these, all of these events as FRBs or RFI and provides us the label. All of this information along with the metadata of all the candidates and all the files would be saved into an Elasticsearch based database. And this Elasticsearch based database would also notify the users or the TPP team whenever anything interesting is found. So let's talk about each of these steps a little bit more detail. So we already, so let's start with the data. We already have around half a petabyte of archival and new data at WBU. This is from various uh, surveys which have been done in the past. Uh, some of it as, uh, has already been, has been led by TPP team members. Uh, we also have data sharing agreements uh, with different collaborations. For example, GBNCC, Greenburst, GMRT, and Breakthrough Listen, uh, wherein we'll we have a policy of, share, of sharing the data and then searching the data. Also, if you have some data and you want to get it searched either for pulsars or FRBs, then let's get in touch. We are actively looking for collaborations uh, and we will do a really sensitive search on your data and you get to publish the uh, results if you want. In return, we will use these results in our TPP papers with results from other searches. So here's my email ID, get in touch if you have some data. Uh, this data is then read into Unified Reader, or YOR, which stands for Your Unified Reader. This is more like a Python framework or a library to read, write, process, and visualize the data without worrying about the input data format. So it, has, it contains functions and classes which can individually take care of different data formats, but the user doesn't have to worry about it. The user only interacts, can only interact with the top level class, which is unified across these different frameworks. 
Uh, and we have already added in functions and classes for many different single pulse searches analysis. Uh, the paper for this unified reader is, already, is under review in the Journal of Open Source Software, uh, but the library is still under active development. So if you're interested, feel free to fork and use it. Or if you find any issues, just open up an issue on GitHub and we'll be really happy to help you out. Here are a few utility functions within Unified Reader. For example, uh, your band pass can be used to generate the band pass of the data. This combined mocks is just a Python version of the original combined mocks.c, which uh, can be used to combine the two subbands generated from mock spectrometer of a recibo. This can work on 16 bit data as well. Uh, we do have some other functions, for example, your Heimdall, which can do an end to end Heimdall search on the data, uh, starting from any format and generate uh, candidates. Uh, we have this uh, your viewer, which can be used to take a quick look at the data. So uh, it, it shows the time series of the data. It can be used to see what uh, the RFI environment is like on the data. You can even play around with uh, flagging with RFI flagging parameters and see what effect those flagging parameters would uh, have on the data. How much is flagging? How is the band pass like in the data? And then uh, and then you can pass on all these parameters to your proper to your data analysis pipeline. So this is just for a quick look at the data quality, statistics, and other things. Um, we also have your writer, which is basically a unified writer. So using the capability of unified reader and attaching it with the unified writer, we can read in any format of data and write it out in any format. And this is just a code example for that, which reads in this data uh, using unified reader, passes the unified reader object to the writer class. Here you can choose the start sample, end sample, ch channel numbers, whichever you want to write. You can even choose the RFI parameters. So you, if you want, you can uh, even choose the RFI parameters and do online RFI flagging. And just by calling this function, which is as simple as to fill or two fits, you can write out the data in a fits format or the filter bank format. And everything else is taken care of by this writer class. So as I mentioned, we have implemented different RFI mitigation algorithms. One of it is a sample filter. What it does is it, uh, it fits a polynomial to a window of the band pass and finds the outlier based on that. Uh, the, all the input parameters, for example, the window size of the, of the window size to fit uh, the data on and then what the standard deviation should be for to find the outliers, everything is an input parameter and that can be tweaked. Uh, but this is one algorithm which can be used to find outliers or RFI. Another one is spectral kurtosis filter which basically uses the distribution, inherent distribution of the data uh, and what the pipeline configuration was. So for example, what the number of accumulations were they done on FPGA, what the observing frequency is, and all those parameters to estimate the outliers from the data set. And it, can, it also has some input parameters which can be tweaked based on implementation. Both of these uh, filters, along with other RFI mitigation filters, are implemented as modules. So they can be attached uh, they can be implemented seriously, serially next to each other and then applied iteratively. So this is just an example of using both spectral kurtosis and sample filter, which as you can see, uh, can find even the low level and the strong RFI peaks from the data. And even though this pulsar was really, really strong, it did not uh, flag the pulsar data as RFI. So that's an interesting, important thing which we want to make sure of. Um, so after all this single pulse search is done and flagging is done, the data is, the candidates are passed on to uh, this machine learning uh, to fetch, which is a set of deep learning models for FRB classification. It has a recall of more than 99.5% above a signal to noise of 10. What that means is that it is able to find 90, more than 99.5% FRBs from the data. It is faster than real time and can classify around 50,000 candidates in an hour. It does not require any retraining or fine tuning. It's been trained to be uh, and trained to be robust to a uh, frequency and telescope changes and are even changes in RFI environment. Uh, that's why it has already aided in detections of several FRBs and has detected tons of single pulses from pulsars as is, it has already been deployed at a different telescopes which I've listed here. So once the candidates are found by the single pulse search system, those candidates are pre-processed and passed on to fetch which will provide us the classifications and all those classifications will then go on and be saved in the database. But we have also uh, implemented, we, have also, we are also using fetch for pulsars. So for any pulsar search, pulsar search software, it returns a DM and the period of the pulsar. The data can then be de-dispersed and folded to generate these candidate plots 
uh, which can then directly be fed into fetch and fetch can label them because these pulse are these these plots are basically indistinguishable uh, from a, from such a sim similar plot generated from a single pulse of uh, of of any pulsar or an frb so fetch can also be used to classify pulsars and we already have gpu accelerated codes to do folding and pre processing and uh, perform all this analysis in real time so what this enables us to do is that in this whole pipeline framework which we have developed for the petabyte project we can replace the part of single pulse search with a pulsar search tool and just run the pipeline as is and that's what we've been working on so we've been uh, in talks with the developers of astro accelerate to incorporate astro accelerate within the unified reader astro accelerate uh, is a set of uh, is a library which contains scripts and uh, pipelines for uh, single pulse searches and pulsar searches uh, and it's all gpu accelerated so we are we we have already tried a lot of tests to incorporate astro accelerate and read the data from unified reader pass it on to astro accelerate which will do a gpu accelerated pulsar search for us and then pass on the data to fetch which will then be labeled uh, this enable and all of this pipeline is gpu accelerated uh, everything here will run in real time so using this framework we can now do real time pulsar searches and even do jerk searches and excel searches in real time uh, and classification so everything would be can now be done in real time for pulsars as well for a project like a tpp the science outputs primarily are the discoveries of new transients be it frbs single pulses from pulsars or rats uh, as we'll be searching from for uh, searching a wide variety of data at different frequencies and a different observing configurations we expect that we'll be able to place stringent limits on rates spectral index and source count distribution of frbs we also expect to find lots and lots of single pulses from pulsars using which we can characterize the pulsar intermittency and nulling uh, behavior we would also detect lots of giant pulses from msps uh, which are also pretty interesting uh, all of the pulses which are detected in the tpp pipeline would be cross matched with the database so internally within the tpp database and also with psr cat and other uh, catalogs so that we will know whether when we have found new pulses from known uh, sources or known pulsars uh, which can then be used to do pulsar amplitude distribution studies and study of the pulse to pulse jitter of pulsars and new rat pulses uh, if discovered can also help us to estimate the period of to to estimate a better period for those rats uh, these are some early results from the pipeline so we ran an early version of the pipeline on 3 hours of publicly available frb121102 data uh, and we found 120 bursts from this this is given on this bottom right wherein the x axis is time for the two days uh, on which these 3 hours of data was spread uh, and the signal to noise the red crosses represent new bursts while the black dots represent published bursts and as you can see we have more than doubled the amount of bursts which were found in the data so this whole pipeline was run automatically and these 120 bursts were just found after uh, fetch classification and just want to point out uh, that these two plots on the top right are the spectrogram and the dm time plot for the for two of these bursts and how we and just look how weak these are and still they were correctly classified uh, and identified by the pipeline um, early versions of pipeline have also been used by uh, different authors tpp would also have an outreach component wherein we'll train undergrads and high school students as part of the spot and pulsar search collaborative program to analyze and classify candidates and to uh, deliver stem team presentation throughout schools in west virginia um, here's my summary slide tpp uh, uh, aims at performing uniform sensitivity search in more than a petabyte of data with wide variety of telescopes and observing frequencies. Uh, we jokingly call our pipeline your Heimdall fetches FRBs. And now by adding, by replacing Heimdall with Astro Accelerate, we can even find pulsars. So it's now your Astro Accelerate fetches pulsars. So we'll, we expect to find lots of uh, single pulses and giant pulses from pulsars and characterize pulsar intermittency spectrum. Uh, we'll, everything would be made public, so it would be a public database of more than 10 million candidates. And we are actively looking for collaborations. So if you have some data which you like to get processed for pulsars or FRBs, let's get in touch and we'll be happy to process your data for you. Thank you.